ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Tuesday. There's a new sheriff in town calling the shots in baseball. After years of serving as Secretary General of the Bahamas Baseball Federation, Teddy Sweeting is now the president. As our Charles Fisher tells us, the first order of business is to establish a national baseball championships in the school system. Teddy Sweeting thankful to become the third president in the existence of the Bahamas Baseball Federation. I just want to thank my, my membership that supported me, the active members, and I got a full support from them, and I appreciate that. I'm really humbled with that. And I also want to thank my, my past president, Greg Zaldi Kalman. He did a tremendous job in keeping the federation together um, with new plans and ideas in respect of youth tournaments all over the place. And he did a tremendous job in the growth and the development of baseball. I handled most of the operational part of the federation over the last 10, 12 years. I mean, from its inception, I handled the operations of the federation. So I move with a new heart right now, and that's um, being the visionary one. And I, I, and I think I have a lot of plans set in place. The slate, a mixture of persons from all over the Bahamas, a home run swing for the Federation. Which now brings a more focus on all of the islands, and that's what I want to focus on, is making sure that everybody who wants to be a part of baseball, who wants to contribute to baseball, uh, feel uh, significant in respect of they have some input in where baseball is headed. That's why I wanted to make sure that we didn't just have a, a, a federation that was Nassau and Freeport based or Grand Bahama based. I want to make sure that nobody's left out and the family islands, you know, would be also supported when all of these things start to explode from Major League Baseball. And that's why I wanted to have uh, family island representation on the federation so they know exactly when these things are happening, so they know what support is about to come to them. And so that's, that's what we wanted to encompass, and not just having a, a select few of individuals. First order of business, meet with the ministries of education and youth, sports and culture to establish a true national championship. First of all, have uh, what we call the National High School Baseball Championships. Um, right after the season is completed in, in, in the government schools, we're going to go out to all of the private schools who would like to participate in that and try to get as much schools in for that. So it's going to be a double age uh, bracket tournament. It's going to be junior and senior boys. That's our first initiative. We'll have much more from Teddy, including the future relationship of the BBF and the Bahamas Baseball Association. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Thanks so much, Charles. Stafford and Brister is at the helm of the Bahamas Boat Owners Sailing Association. The newly elected president has extended the olive branch to all sailors, hoping to have a smooth sailing season. You need to involve the boat owners and the sailors. I don't think um, we had much involvement over the past years, but now to involve the sailors, especially the young sailors. This guy, Brian, I always talk about him. He's a young man. That's Alfred Johnson's son. Alfred has been sailing a long time. Brian is a young man who shows a lot of potential, and persons like him, we are inviting even more members to come along to you know, make themselves available to be a part of the association. We want the members to speak, we want the board owners to have the say, and that's what we are going to do in order to push the club ahead. From sailing, we move to track and field. The race for the president's chair in the B3As is being compared to the hype that surrounds a 400 by 1 meter relay race. Current President Mike Sands and his opponent Rosemary Carey are both bragging about their slates and the fine job they will do if elected. Like in all relays, getting the baton around is very important. So Sands believes that it's time to hand off some responsibilities to the athletes. He is encouraging athletes to select a representative who will be vocal and hold the newly elected executives feet to the fire when it comes to their needs. It, there's a provision in our constitution for an athlete's rep, right? Now, unfortunately, the athletes have not taken, maximized uh, the advantage of that because it allows for that representative to sit at the executive table at the board and whatever decisions are made, they can rein on the decision. We're going to make every effort to encourage that, to, to continue and to find a representative, an athlete liaison officer um, that will be in a position to represent the views of the athletes. Uh, unfortunately, the persons that were uh, elected by the athletes or appointed by the athletes over the past several years are not domiciled in New Providence, and so that creates a problem. Uh, and so, you know, I'm hoping that the athletes will view that 
as an opportunity because notwithstanding that we can appoint someone not to take away from the elected person but to be able to have more ongoing communication um, it is our intention to be able to establish uh, that position for ongoing communications with the athletes. The National Sports Hall of Fame will grow by 15 on Thursday when the induction ceremony takes place at the government house. The new additions, according to the Minister of Sports, Dr. Daniel Johnson, is the latest movement designed to improve sports in the country. This uh, movement we're having this week is a, a tribute and a great, great thing for the Bahamas sports franchise. Every year, at the end of the year, we do a, what we call Sports Heritage Month where we, we honor the people who have done well this year. We recognize those who have done fantastic in the past, induct them into the Hall of Fame as the best of the best. And we also encourage the rising stars. And we wanted to demonstrate today um, some of the people who have taken that and made that a part of their lives, brought them to the house for recognition, very well received. Um, we've been to D.W. Davis School. We go to Oaksfield Primary tomorrow. Uh, they're on Bahamas at sunrise next week. Uh, they'll be with the Governor General for a courtesy call. The induction will be Thursday night. A huge gala like we've never seen the likes of in the Bahamas on Friday night to celebrate all our sporting heroes and our 46 disciplines in the Bahamas. And then we roll out that we're getting ready for Rio. We go into the next year, the Olympic year, um, really, really on, on fire, ready to go. And um, we're trying to push more disciplines into the Olympic movement. And I think we got a good chance. The World Bowling Women's Championships is considered the most prestigious event for female athletes in the sport. This is where the best of the best roll down the lane. Janice Hoyt will represent the 242 at this year's competition, and Julian Gibson tells us she doesn't plan to come back empty handed. What can we expect from you? Gold, silver, bronze, or a ribbon? You know what? I'm going with the intentions of getting a gold, okay? Um, but I'm, I'm going to try my best. What it means for you, you uh, bowl here, but to compete at that level, boy, it must be a great feeling. Yeah, it's always when you get to compete with others. Um, and going all the way there, you really want to do good. Um, the competition level, you know, it's always going to be good. There's um, the teams that we're up against, the U.S. and Canada, they're very good. So I know it's going to be some real top, Bowling, I'm going on up there. <laughs> I'm not nervous. I'm prepared. There's still room, you know, to things that you can work on before you get there. Well, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson.